Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Laravel Lair tutorial. In today's tutorial, I wanna show you how I'm using joints to make parametric designs. So this is a wire spool carousel that kind of spins around and holds these spools of wire. One of the things I wanted to do with this design is make it parametric so that the spools could change. If I wanted to get bigger spools, I could just change one value and hopefully accommodate for all of those uh, bigger spools. So here's the example. I have my user parameters open and I have this one called diameter, which really just changes the main diameter, but a lot of little things are being driven off of it. So I'm going to change this to a bigger value. And just to show you, I'll give it a big value. It's going from 62 to 200. I'll hit enter and what happens is Visual will recalculate everything and you'll see that the spools are, <laughs> they're really very tiny now, they um, accommodate and they spread out with the diameter, which is really cool. And all this is, is uh, parametric, so I can bring this back down to 62, and you can see they all get crunched back together. So this is a really interesting way because the spools are actually not made in this assembly. They're imported as an external component. So I want to show you guys how that happens. So I'm going to step all the way back to the beginning. I'll show you kind of how I structured this. So there's no, um, when you first make a document, you, you, you name it. And then what I did was I created my first component, which is gonna be the holder. This is like the kind of mounting piece that holds those spools of wire. I wanted to have multiple spools, so I created another component in the, in the, main, uh, in the main assembly. I named it spools. So then inside of spools, I imported my first spool. So the spool is designed outside of this assembly, like I said, so we can right click on it. And here, this little link icon lets you know that it is a linked component. It was imported externally. So inside your data panel, let's say you have a, a folder of parts that you'd like to reuse, like a TRS jack or an arcade button. You can right click, hit insert into current design and use the, reuse these parts, uh, especially for these like electric components and things. So I got this spool, I imported it in and then I needed to kind of create a, a structure or, or some sort of form to allow me to pick using a joint uh, where the spool needs to be. So what I did was I created a sketch inside of the holder that's going to drive everything, right? It's going to drive where the spool should be and it's going to drive how, uh, how the shape is going to be for the actual spool holder. So here's the sketch. Let's go inside of it and take a look at some of the diameters. Um, so the diameters are... <laughs> for, uh, nicely set to diameter. So you can see that this one here is uh, set to diameter and there's an outer one that has a diameter with a little bit of mass of so diameter multiplied by one and a half. So whenever I change the diameter, if you multiply that by one and a half, you'll get this bigger number, this bigger value. I have this line here. It's a straight line. It's the only line in this. And this is what, this is the reference point that I'm using for uh, driving where the outer spools are gonna go. So when I double click on this dimension, you can see it's the diameter divided by two, which is the radius. So whenever I change the diameter, all these things are gonna change. So let's try that out now. So I'm gonna change this to like 90, and we should see half of that, which is 45. If we did 100, it would be 50. So you can see everything's kind of playing nicely with it. So now that I have this reference point, this little dot, I can use that little dot to tell the next spool to always go and be fixed to that little dot via a joint. So let's see how that works. So I got this sketch and then I'm going to copy and paste this spool and then just kind of move it over to the side a little bit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a joint to it. And there's my joint. It's been applied. So if I go inside the joint, you can see that uh, I have the spool selected as the component and it's, it's actually setting the bottom center of it. And then I'm snapping it to the second component, which actually really isn't a body. It's, I haven't made any bodies yet. It's just a point inside of a different component. So you can use points of reference uh, inside of a sketch uh, to, to kind of tell a, an object where to be. So that's really cool. I haven't really done that yet. I'll play a little animation here just to kind of show you that it is a rigid motion type. So normally with joints, and one of the reasons why I didn't use joints is because the notion that you only need them for like movable objects, that's not at all the point. You can, joints is just a way to tell and give a relationship to a thing in space. Like where does this thing need to go? So that's why I'm using a rigid type because it's not moving, it's not giving me motion, it's just stuck in there. So it'll always be stuck there. So now that that joint is applied, we can start playing with it and instantly see that it changes. So I'll change this diameter back to 62 and you'll see it, it, uh, it just kind of goes and gets glued to that little reference point. 
So that's awesome. So now that that's in place, I can apply um, a circular pattern like that. And the circular pattern is done by uh, setting, setting the object first and then setting the axes, which is this, uh, any one of these circles would do fine. Uh, but, but mainly this circle is, is, is the one that's going to work. Just to kind of prove that, I'll select this circle on the outside. And it's, it's because the, all the circles are concentric, so they all kind of follow the same thing. So now that that's applied, you can test it even further by changing the diameter, making sure that it's still, a, it's still kind of flexing with it. And it is, so that's really good. Let's send you back to 100. So once that's applied, then I could just go through and start designing the actual holder and any subsequent pieces that um, will be used. Um, in this case, it's um, I am using a ball bearing to kind of make this a rotating platter, somewhat of a lazy Susan. Uh, and then I created these holes. And that's where I'm actually going to start doing a little bit of uh, cleanup work here. So what happened is I started importing hardware screws. And the thing with that is you can um, use the component call or the, the plugin called Insert McMaster Car Components. And it's sort of built into Fusion. And this is a really great way to get screws or bolts or fixtures, a lot of different parts, um, standard parts that are off the shelf, maybe at your Lowe's or whatever hardware store. So I would definitely recommend doing that. If you're new to McMaster Car, there's a lot of resources on how to use it, but it's, it's pretty easy. Just kind of click around and import your STL or, or not STL, import your step files into here. So that's what I did. So I grabbed this screw and then I created a screws folder and added these screws. The problem is that when I update the parameter, the diameter, um, the screws don't know to move yet. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make these screws parametric or, or driven with the joint so that they all move whenever the parameter changes. So it's going to come in here and just kind of hide these components so I can just see the screws. So I'll go ahead and delete uh, this guy, uh, this guy and this guy. So this is what it looks like in the timeline when you import uh, a, uh, an object from McMaster car. It is, it, it, it looks like a folder and it's basically one of these things, which is a, a base model feature. We don't really need to mess with that. What we do want to do is we want to apply a joint to it right away. So what I'll do is I'll bring up the joint window over here under assemble. It's J, uh, as a hotkey. I'll have to remember that one. So the first thing is you, when you, when you use, uh, when you click on the selection, it, you can roll over objects and it kind of gives you these snapping points, which is really cool. Uh, for this particular screw, I just need to select the outer diameter like that. And that'll give me kind of this inner, uh, this kind of centered based um, snapping point. And then I'll bring over the holder because that's where I want them to kind of be. And what I'll do is I'll select uh, one of these uh, circles, preferably this one here because of the way um, this was like kind of the master to make uh, these, uh, these cir this uh, circular pattern. I'll click this, this right here. And then uh, Fusion will just kind of snap those together and give me a rigid motion type by default, which is exactly what I want. And there's also alignment features. So you can come in here and modify some offsets if you want. So if you wanted to kind of have this come up a little bit, you could do that as well. Um, so that's really cool. So I'll hit OK. Now that my joint is set, my joint is set, I can start playing with the parameters. Uh, so I'll bring this back to 62, and you'll see that, yep, it's updating with it. So now what I'll do with the screw is I'll go to the screw component and then I'll apply a circular pattern like that. So I'll make sure my object is the screw and then my axes will actually be this, uh, this, blue, um, this blue line here, which is the Z axis. Now I can't select it yet, so I'm just gonna click and hold and then I get this little depth window and then I can select the Z and I will change the quantity of, this, of the pattern to five and they all line up nicely because I'm using uh, the exact same circle that I started for started with when I cr originally created those holes. So I hit OK. And now I got my five screws. I can um, activate the whole assembly, bring back the spools, and now I can kind of test this out. So I'm really new to using joints. And again, I, the reason why I wasn't using them is I just didn't know that you could use them to drive parametric designs. They doesn't necessarily have to move. And it definitely doesn't have to be uh, a hinge for a door. That's kind of why I never use them. Uh, but joints are really powerful, and I'm going to start using them a whole lot. If you guys want to see more stuff with joints, I got some other things to show you, like how you can use it with standard kind of rectangular enclosures um, and other things, other different shapes. 
So let me know if you want to see that and I'll put it together. If you guys have any uh, suggestions and, and comments and, and that sort of stuff, there is a comment section, of course. All of the links to the, the download links for this object are linked down in the description. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.